Good morning. Welcome to worship. Woo, this morning. It's good to see some familiar faces. Some of you might not know who I am. My name is Caitlin. I used to attend this church. Uh, now I'm up in, uh, no, down, down in Franklin. Before we sing this first song, I just have a scripture I want to read. Uh, if you guys can stand, though, while I read the scripture. We have Psalm 63, verse 1 through 5. Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food, and my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. Let us sing. We waited for this day. We waited for this day. We're gathered in your name. We're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. Place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky, descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes, you're the reason we're here, you're the reason we're singing, open up the heavens, we want to see you, open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart.
may be seated. Welcome to worship. It is so good to be worshiping with you, each of you. Whether you, where I can see you here at home or, or uh, I'm here in the sanctuary or, or you're worshiping at home, welcome to worship at United Methodist Church of White Bay, a block from beautiful Lake Michigan, where you should come if you can. If you, if you have a chance, please, please take a moment and fill out this, uh, the attendance card. And if you're at home, you can also record your attendance uh, on the front page of the, of the website. Uh, there's a box for you to, to record your attendance at worship. And uh, there's uh, the prayers. Uh, prayers are prayed here in worship, and they're prayed uh, during the week by our prayer team. If you have a prayer, uh, please, um, please write a prayer at umcwfb.org, and we will pray your prayers. And if you have not, uh, we, we recently completed our, our, our pledge drive, but if you have not had a chance yet to, to fill out a pledge card, uh, they, I'm, I'm sure you've, you can find one in the pew. Uh, go ahead and fill it in, and then put it in the, in the, uh, in the offering plate. Oh, you can put it... Um, face side down. And then, uh, yeah, the five roses on the altar for five baptisms at 1030 service. Five. Three babies, two youth being baptized today in this church. Monday night, 7 o'clock, is a charge conference, our annual meeting, where we make all the decisions of the church for the year. Um, so, do come. We're going to be meeting in the sanctuary because the technology in the sanctuary, we're going to be meeting in the chapel. Did I say that? I may not have. Um, because the technology is being changed in the sanctuary. By next week, is it next week? We're going to have new, new technology next week that will make live streaming more secure for our people at home. So... Uh, our charge conference will be in the chapel. Welcome to worship. I'm excited for you to be here. Well, good morning, folks. I am excited to be here with you all. I, I just want to let you know that, uh, you know, we have some exciting family things going on. Uh, the reason I'm talking about that is because I'm the family pastor. My name's Andrew Jones. I am excited that next week, we have confirmation, and then uh, that night on the 21st, we have a family game night. It's going to be amazing, and uh, then the following, you know, weeks, we've got, you know, camps and VBS coming up all summer. It's going to be great, and in a moment, we're going to take the kids uh, up to Sunday school. Miss Lori and I are going to do that here in a, in a second, and uh, yeah, I think that pretty much, you know, we, when we think about all of the things that could happen, hold on, my phone's, hold on a second. Hello? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm at work, Mom. What's going on? I mean, what? Yeah, yeah, happy Mother's Day to you. Yeah, right. I'm not a mom. You didn't have sex. Yeah, uh, the card's in the mail, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, you're waiting for your video? I, I didn't do a video this week. Well, I was busy, busy uh, eating broccoli and, and cleaning my room and brushing my teeth after every meal. And yes, I'm wearing my retainer at night. Thank you. Well, um, you know what? How about this? I have some people here. Um, I bet they could sing a song for you. And because uh, you're watching, you know, you could enjoy this song about family. All right. And then I'll pray and then we'll t I'll take the kids to Sunday school, okay? Oh, thanks for tuning in. I love you too. All right. Goodbye. Guys.
awesome. My mom just texted me and said that was better than any video I could make, so uh, thanks. Um, Let's pray together, and uh, we're going to send our kids off to Sunday school. Gracious God, we just thank you for moms. We thank you for uh, the celebration of moms. And um, God, we also pray for all those who are uh, dealing with Mother's Day in different ways at this time. God, be near to all of us because you love us like moms do. God, we just pray that you would help us to love one another each and every day. And we pray these things in the name of Christ. Amen. In the dark you lift my eyes for this journey you designed. Your light guiding me. Let my heart align with you in your word and in your truth, your voice calling me, my faith in the unseen. Oh, you reign in my soul, oh, you reign in my soul, I will never be alone, I will never be I will never be alone. Though my world may fall and fail, you alone are sovereign still, constant in my trial. On the earth, your kingdom reigns. All creation brings you praise. Jesus, you are life. Your name lifted high. Oh, you reign in my soul. Oh, you reign in my soul. I will never be alone. Well, 
Let us pray our morning prayer. Creating and loving God, on this day set aside to honor and remember mothers. We give you thanks for our mothers. We are grateful that you chose to give us life through them and that they received the gift of life from your hand and gave it to us. We thank you for the women who raised us, who were our mothers in childhood. Whether birth mom, adopted mom, older sister, aunt, grandmother, stepmother, or someone else, we thank you for those women who held us and fed us, who cared for us and kissed away our pain. We pray that our lives may reflect the love they showed us and that they would be pleased to be called our moms. We also pray for those who have lost a child through death and those who have been unable to give birth or be a source of strength to their children that they are not left alone. Grant that they are strengthened and loved and honored through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray now for those in our midst whose petitions have come to us. Prayer for a friend who is a mom and her adult children, that they can find reconciliation and a future of good relationships. Prayers for John Ross, who has had a very bad fall. Prayers for a member of the praise team who's looking for a car to buy on the installment plan. Prayers for Josh's niece on her 10th birthday. Prayers for Oliver, who is graduating from high school. Prayers for Pam, who will have bypass surgery on Wednesday. Prayers for a brother having a biopsy on Monday. Prayers of healing for a friend with a migraine headache that just won't quit. These are the prayers of your people, Lord. We offer these prayers in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses, as we, as we forgive, those forgive those who trespass, who trespass against, against, us. against us. And lead, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. In the Spirit of God, who gave us life, who sent Jesus Christ to love us, we offer ourselves and our gifts to extend the witness of his church. I now invite the ushers to come forward to receive our offerings. Loose change this month will support our six meal programs. Truth is, you know. 
you have not seen. So in all things be my life and breath. I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less. When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move. When you don't part the water, I wish I could walk through. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you. people of God said, Amen. I'll read the appointed scripture for today. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives within, within you and will be with you. I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You'll pray with me. God, every day we come to you. Every day we trust you to be with us. Every day we depend on your love. Be with us now, this day, as we ponder your word together in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have to say, before I knew anything about God, before I recognized the name Jesus, I knew I could depend on my mother. Before I learned the song about Jesus loving me in Sunday school, I knew mom loved me. Before kindergarten, mom taught her three boys to play nicely. Yeah, we didn't always follow what she taught us. Oh, we often didn't follow what she taught us, but then, we learned the word forgiveness. I learned it from mom. Before I went to kindergarten, my brother and I crashed the car into a tree. Some of the 42 windows I broke were before kindergarten and most in elementary years. Before I went to kindergarten, I was playing with a bat trying to hit a ball my brother threw. And I saw a very senior woman walking up Pearl Street in front of our house, and for some reason, 
I walked over to the sidewalk and hit her with the bat. It wasn't an accident. Well, she went to our front door, rang the bell, and reported to Mom, who I believe was hosting a women's circle. <laughs> Mom never gave up on me. You know, there's some things that only Mom knows. My brothers don't know, my wife doesn't know, and my children, who always love the stories of trouble I caused, they don't know yet either. Still, Mom loves me and said she's proud of the way I turned out. Not all the trouble I, uh, I caused happened before kindergarten. One morning in kindergarten, the teacher had us sit around the piano when she asked, what should we do with Don Francis? Patsy Patton said we could transfer him. <laughs> I had to ask what the word meant. One week it was apparently so bad at home that mom grounded us from Sunday school. You got that? She grounded us from Sunday school. I don't know why. Perhaps she thought that Sunday school teacher, hey, you guys, oh, there's only, okay. Maybe she thought the Sunday school teacher would ask us why we weren't in Sunday school and we would have to confess. Well, but my brother and I found balloons in our desk, filled them with water, and threw them out of our second-story bedroom window of the parsonage at the people walking to church. We were always in Sunday school after that. There is more. I'll share that another time, perhaps. I was punished especially for swearing or for sassing, but I was always loved. When we celebrated Mom's 100th birthday last summer, I, I wrote in part that Mom has shown me God. She empowered me, letting me learn stick shift at the edge of a ditch at the flower shop supported my national and international trips. She paid attention to me, communicating by letter when I was gone, visiting every place I've lived, teaching me ironing and sewing and cross-stitching games and puzzles. She, she accepted me despite the things I'd done. She loved me, showed me her trust of God when Dad died, demonstrated grace when her sons changed course and embodied the spirit in prayer, worship, witness, and service, even in solitary living as a widow for 36 years. Mom has made homes of faith for her family and for others everywhere she has been. She still is offering a bed if needed, a meal, good conversation. She did not leave us orphans. At 100, now near 101, she is still making a welcoming home, praying, empowering, paying attention, accepting, and loving. Mom has taught me about the undeserved grace of God. Mother has shown me God. We baptize three babies today but it will be their parents who take the vow to teach them the way of God's love. They love their children, show them the love of God. Before the children are aware of the love of God, they will experience from their parents. Teresa, whom we call mother, though she never had children of her own, was indeed a mother. In her case, it wasn't usually infants that she brought in from the streets of Calcutta. It was adults, and on occasion, they were near death. When, yet, when she brought them into her shelter, she bathed and fed them. Why? She was asked. They're so near death. So they recognize the love of God when they get to God, she said. Too many people don't have the experience of love and forgiveness. So Jesus came to show us 
and now sends us to others. In the communion liturgy, we recall Jesus saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink this, remember me. But Jesus came to love, not to judge. And I learned that the love mothers show and God shows involves a lot of forgiveness. Probably my most commonly spoken phrase after I love you is, Jesus, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You see, I didn't stop being imperfect when I went to kindergarten. There are things about me that now only my wife knows. And though I often say there are no secrets in the spirit realm, she keeps many of mine. I trust God's forgiveness and keep going. You know, Jesus often forgave his disciples, kept them close to him, even when they disappointed and denied him. He forgave those who killed him and those who called out for him to be killed. He forgave the thief on the cross next to him. And when he returned, he came to the same disciples who denied and fled from him, the same disciples who refused to believe Mary and others who saw him risen. On my last Sunday here, I will ask you to forgive me for the ways I disappointed you, and there are many. Forgiveness is the pressure valve, the pressure release valve on a relationship that allows one to love again. Because we are imperfect and often troublemakers, there is no lasting love without forgiveness. As long as I harbor hate and seek revenge or hurt, I have stopped the flow of love. When I held hate in my heart for people who disappointed me and caused me difficulty at one point in my life, I, I could not love them, and it was difficult to love others as well because my emotions were embroiled and I lived out of the hurt. Forgiveness is an internal commitment to move on, pray for someone to grow, and focus your life on the influence you have and the calling God has for you. When we do, we can love again. Forgiveness isn't letting someone take advantage of you. It's not without accountability. The thief on the cross, though forgiven and loved, still died. I often stop at the phrase in this scripture, I will not leave you orphans. I learned early that not everyone has a loving parent. While in elementary school, I walked a friend home from playing at my house. When we got there, his dad took him into another room and beat him. I don't know why. My wife worked with cases like this for 13 years. It's hard for an abusive parent or spouse to show God's love. It's hard for an exclusive or withdrawn church to assist people in becoming disciples. We are sent to show God's love to others, much like a mom or a good Samaritan or like a healer or teacher. To do that, we have to en engage with people. This is more than serving them. It's getting to know them, accepting them, empowering them, forgiving them, loving them. When they don't have someone in their life who does that with them and offers them the, them the opportunity to love as well. Maybe that's the key. Mom not only loved me, she taught me to love. She did that when our family took in to live with us my cousin who had lost both her parents at the age of 12. She did that when our family took in a foster girl. And when we, when we hosted two exchange students. I learned from an African-American Methodist youth group in Beloit, one Carolyn Bolton and her husband led, that businesses in Delavan 
often refused to serve them. That was start of my action to love others. When I took a petition to the churches saying they would support businesses that serve African Americans. Folks, that was 50 years ago. We need to provide opportunities to people in our reach to love others, even when it's difficult, even when it involves forgiveness. This is when the church is at its best. We don't have to be women who bore children. We are all called to show love and forgiveness everywhere. And maybe our loving mothers will be our role model. This is my prayer for the church. Amen. As we get ready to sing this last song, I, uh, I just wanted to give you guys a little background on it. Uh, this next song is called I'm So Blessed. Sorry, let me pull up my little spiel. There we go. All right, so this next song is called I'm So Blessed. It was written and performed by a group called Cain. They're three siblings. Uh, back in 2020, they were going on their first ever tour in a tour bus sharing it with We the Kingdom and Zach Williams. They just kept looking at each other saying, I am so blessed. Unfortunately, 2020, things took a little bit of a turn. They had about 80 shows canceled that year, and every time that they get a new one, they say, I'm so blessed. Everything felt like it was bad, but they had to make an attitude adjustment. It was amazing to watch the blessing of God in their lives. They didn't deserve it then, now they super don't deserve it. And thank you, God, for doing things your way and not ours. When you're listening to I'm So Blessed, I hope that you can take your focus and just bring it out. Don't worry about the circumstances. Think about my heart beating, I'm breathing, I'm alive, I'm healthy, I have friends, family, and I have Jesus in my heart. And that's all that matters. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed, I'm so blessed, I'm so blessed, hallelujah, I'm blessed. So I'm knocking at my door today, I ain't gonna let it in. And worry, wanna steal my joy away, but I ain't gonna let it win. Cause on my best day, I'm a child of God, on my worst day, I'm a child of God. i 
from here, don't we? We don't stay here. You're not going to stay here, are you? No, not today. And, and some of you go to celebrate Mother's Day. But for everyone, let us celebrate what God has called us to be. Like a loving mother, forgiving and leading the world in the Spirit of God. So go with the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.